Hi, this is Elliot Fulham, and you are listening to No Good Music and the Horror Con Lounge. I can just feel the end of ways going over another day. special guest with us today. He's an actor who starred in Terrifier 2, the upcoming Terrifier 3. Uh, you may know him as Jonathan from those movies. He's also a singer-songwriter. He's released two full-length albums. Let's welcome to No Good Music and the Horror Con Lounge, Elliot Fulham. <laughs> what is yeah. up? Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, we're doing, we're going to do a crossover because Jeremy hosts the Horror Con Lounge. As, as well as no good music. So we're going to try and cover both. Yeah, we're going to try and promote you as much as we <laughs> awesome. can. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we're going to start. Um, is this, why is my mic? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can. can you hear me? But you're right next to me, so. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I follow you on Instagram. I don't think Jeremy's on Instagram. I'm not. I need to get on there because everybody's yeah. on Instagram. Definitely get I, on that gram. <laughs> I love your 19 and exploring music. It's great. You post vinyl all the time that you're buying, I assume. And, uh, you yeah. know, anything from uh, like Billy Idol, I saw Radiohead. And one I was surprised with is Sarah Shook and the Disarmers because she's not as well known. So <laughs> you're very eclectic. Thank you. And now, did you... Did you grow up listening to what your parents listened to, uh, like, or did you kind of explore on your own with music? I, I did kind of both. I'm, I'm kind of both. Uh, there's tons of stuff that my parents got me into. That's like, they got, they, they were fantastic musical guidance teachers. for me. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they, yeah, the teachers. There you go. That's the word. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they got me into like all like the metal bands, the goth, like all the like the classics and stuff. Radiohead, like you mentioned, my dad got me into. But then I, of course, did some exploring on my own as I got older, as I'm as you know, mm -hmm. I got more into, you know, social media and stuff. Uh, my friends would recommend me stuff. And I'm always on Spotify, Explore, was trying to find stuff. Uh, so a lot of like, you know, any modern artists like Tyler, the creator, Mac to or whatever, I'm getting my parents into them now. Oh, okay. That's, That's cool. <laughs> my son is 20, so he's only a year older than you, but nice. And he, he, I, I don't even know what he listens to. That's it's, uh, I think he listens to rap. <laughs> well, it's funny. I'm actually, oh nice. I loved hearing you say that because you just hit on it with your son. I don't think my parents know what I listen to either. So. To hear that your parents are actually influenced from your musical taste, that's pretty cool to me. It's different. Hmm. Yeah, we got a we got a very artistic uh, family. Like my mom's a, is an artist; she paints and stuff. So she watches movies. So she gets me into movies. Mm -hmm. uh, my my dad used to be in bands and stuff. So he got me into a ton of music. My mom also mm -hmm. has an incredible music taste. So yeah. We, uh, we're always kind of sharing fun, really cool, creative stuff with mm -hmm. each other. That's awesome. I love that. So when did you start writing, writing your own music? Like at what age? Oh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't, I don't really fully remember. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe I think around, okay, I, I got it. I got it. I remember mm -hmm. uh, like 16 to 17 is when I fully started like diving in to okay. writing music. Uh because I released the What's Wrong album on my 18th birthday, so that's so that's how I remembered that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was very. I mean, I've been playing guitar for like around seven years, so I was okay. kind of just fiddling around, like wearing like, Metallica riffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, 16, 17 is when I fully, really took it seriously to make okay. to make music and write music. Yeah. Now bringing up Metallica, I don't have it on here, but. Uh... <laughs> 
you did some interviews. I don't know how old you are. You're mm-hmm. I mean, you're only 19 now, but you were very young. And you interviewed, uh, what's his name? James. He- oh, yep. Yeah. James Hetfield. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that wasn't was your only interview, so though, good. right? Did you? No, interview? I interviewed tons, tons of metal bands, especially around that time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I was so nervous for that. James Hatfield from Metallica interview like that that year oh my gosh that was probably one of the most nervous moments of my life I was sitting in the waiting room and the nerves yeah whoosh, <laughs> like it was like <laughs> oh man but when he finally walked in and when when I was doing the interview he made me feel real comfortable he was really really cool yeah. uh really really sweet kind person yeah we've encountered that with um well Jeremy doesn't do a lot of the interviews but he'll do the horror we've interviewed Sarah Karloff and girl from friday 13th part two oh, but awesome. my other co-host matt he does the music ones but even though you know i'm nice. i'm very i'm very old jeremy's 20 years <laughs> very 20, old 20 years younger than me <laughs> yes but even in the beginning doing interviews i was like nervous i don't really get nervous anymore the more you do so how did you get into yeah. we'll get back to the music but how, how did you get in and Probably being a big fan of Metallica, that's why you were so so nervous with him. But maybe if you haven't seen any interviews with the person, you just imagine them as, and especially if you look up to the person, everybody's hopefully down to earth and just, you know, human being. And Yes, everyone does. But how did you get into doing the in- interviews? Uh, oh, man. So uh, it all started when I was really, really young. I think I was like maybe nine nine or ten mm-hmm. uh my family like i was i was telling my mom's an artist so she paints and stuff so we would go to a bunch of horror conventions and my mom and my dad we, they were vendors uh at these horror cons they would sell my mom's art uh mm-hmm. it was a family collective brand called little punk people which is still very active today mm-hmm. and since we went to all these horror cons and i was such a huge fan of just youtube and youtube videos like i would i mean i would picture a young kid watching you know minecraft or whatever yeah, on youtube yeah, or just right, whatever right. fun dumb game mm-hmm. is fun to watch at the time uh and i wanted to do that i wanted to do content i wanted to make people happy do fun stuff uh so my parents were like you know well we're meeting all these awesome horror celebrities at these horror cons why don't we do interviews mm-hmm. so that expanded of course from not only just interviewing actors and actresses but also musicians and ever since then it's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ever since then, I've been doing interviews. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> Thank you've, you. You've put out two full-length albums since 2022. First was called What's Wrong? Yes. And the second, End of Waves. Mm-hmm. And yep. your music is kind of uh, ambient. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how to describe yeah. it. You have a very nice, smooth, soothing <laughs> can I say, voice. Thank you. But can you tell us that. about maybe some of the songs that kind of stand out as far as getting the idea or maybe a story behind a song? I'm going to give you four that I really like. Uh, okay. If I say that, I'm bad with words. Uh, Delenia. <laughs> <laughs> Delenia. All right. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Mistake. I think I might even pronounce that one wrong. <laughs> End of Ways and Know Me, which is, I think, a very short song. But are there yes. any of those or any songs that you could kind of t- tell us about from the last Tell year? a little bit of a story? Okay. Oh, man. Every single song, like the way it's written and stuff, it has its own way of coming together. So like a song like Dole and I, I, all those songs from the What's Wrong album I actually were recorded right here in this room that I'm in. Oh, okay. Uh, on my laptop using a interface or whatever. Use, I use the Logic hmm. Pro to record it. And a lot of the songs are about just basically my experiences in life. But the End of Ways album in specific, uh, you mentioned End of Ways and Mistake, I think. Yeah, you mentioned Mistake, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of the songs on that album are actually about what my girlfriend went through. Uh, mm-hmm. I escaped her. My dad and I drove down at like 2 or 3 a.m. to her house uh, and escaped her from an abusive home. Uh, and she's no longer in that abusive situation. So a lot of that album is dedicated to her and the things that she went through. Mm-hmm. And the last song 
is called Over the Moon, and it's a love song about her. Okay. So it's like, you know, mm-hmm. it's supposed to be like a journey through, uh, like an experience, almost like a uh, concept album, going through it and whatever, and then at the end, it's it ends good. It ends in a yeah. good, good yeah. way. So that's kind of what that album's about, and what's wrong in general. That entirety of that album is just about me being a sad, lonely teenager, okay. <laughs> wishing I had someone, wishing I had my Josie. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially a song like Doll and Naya and uh, the tracks on there. me yeah. it's pacific is uh a newer track that one oh man that one kind of just came together naturally it was a subconscious type of song so the lyrics and stuff kind of just came to me and i wrote them down and uh i wanted to keep it short and sweet almost like inspired by like i don't know a uh a moldy peaches type of song and there's also this mm-hmm. band called the lost days that i love to keep it short mm-hmm. simple catchy yeah fun you know like that type. so mm-hmm. that's that's kind of the basic rundown between the two albums okay yeah i have to say you're uh i think your girlfriend did post something about kind of what she went through and i i think it's very incredible what your family has done for her and hopefully she's in a better i know she's in a better place with you and your family and you look like you're happy now and <laughs> so the- thank you i i appreciate appreciate the kind of words but also yeah she's been doing really really well she's been healing she's a really strong person Mm -hmm. uh but she's been healing beautifully she's been doing her own art she's been doing her own painting she's uh gonna try and get into acting herself and stuff so Mm -hmm. uh i really appreciate the kind words and i'll I'll, I'll let her know yeah well she's also very active on your albums right I hear her voice sometimes. Like, yeah, a little bit on the end of Ways Out and she sings. So uh, on Throw It Away, she sings very faintly in the chorus and uh, in the song Forget as well. She sings. That's a, that's a good catch there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the EP you just put out, I want to say it's the first song. No, no, wait a minute. No, it's End of Ways. The first song is not a song. But is that her? Like oh, there's a yeah. person talking yes that is her yeah okay yeah yeah there's birds in the Uh, background yeah yeah (laughs) that's a good way to start the album (laughs) thank you yeah Yeah, i i like it it's like just it's like almost like an introduction like here is she is this is josie and that's of course her on the album cover yeah thank Mm -hmm. that's a i love that track even Mm -hmm. though it's not a song it's not really musical and it's really short i feel like that's a that was a great way to open up the album and did you, um, the second album, did you, End of Ways, did you record that in the studio? You said you recorded the first one in your room yeah, there. that one is recorded in a the studio. There's some tracks and stuff and some parts that were recorded still at home because I, I made a, uh, all my demos so I can be as prepared as possible before I made it to the studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some tracks like Remember When 
or whatever, or uh, the ending of Throw It Away with that Mellotron and stuff. Like those cert- some certain sounds that I felt like I, maybe I couldn't replicate are all still on the album. But so it's like kind of like a mix match. It's like a mix mm-hmm. match uh, out uh, studio and at home. But this mm-hmm. next album that we're doing a third album, that okay. was all recorded back in the same of What's Wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And is your dad on the album? Is he like guitar or? Yes. Or... He, he, well, uh, in the song, Phil and Naya is, is, uh, he he makes a little bit of you know I try to keep it very family oriented uh, because I you know, you know I love them <laughs> and uh, my dad does a little bit of falsetto on the song Dolnaya so like at the second verses or whatever when you hear the wherever that is mm-hmm. that's okay. him okay. Uh, okay. and he's mainly yeah he's mainly my producer so like he'll get like a fresh ear or whatever I was like maybe mm-hmm. like you know add it like a different type of ending here so. Hey, that's that's uh he's awesome now Jer- jeremy and i saw you in montclair mm-hmm. at the comic book store yeah there we got to meet you we got to meet your girlfriend your dad and your mom yeah uh, good friends and you're about to embark on a tour soon mm-hmm. is this your first tour like official tour yes it is my first uh official official tour i did play two shows with Sarah Shook, like we were talking about earlier. Okay. Um, oh, you, you opened but, yeah, this one, Yeah, I opened up for her for just two shows on her tour, but oh, this is, okay. yeah, so I guess this is like my first, like, you know, real, real official tour. I'm going to be playing more than just two shows, okay. but uh, I'm, I'm really excited for it. Uh, will you have a whole, will you have a band with you, or is it going to be? This a... one is going to be solo. Yeah, this okay. is going to be like very similar to the Montclair show show that you saw Mm -hmm. but i'm gonna have uh openers so micah priet uh is gonna be for like new york philadelphia atlanta not atlanta atlanta's adolescent dreams adolescent dreams is playing two shows and micah priet is playing the rest so you're gonna be we saw an acoustic show so it's gonna be another kind of acoustic set okay yes it's gonna be an acoustic set eventually down the line maybe on my next tour uh after this one I'm hoping for to try and get a band together for sure. So I can play like some of the songs, you know, that are more, you know, electric guitar with drums and stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, we enjoyed the show. So definitely to our listeners, I would encourage everybody <laughs> to check you. it out. Yeah. yeah, no, it was great. And even, you know, cause sometimes you hear acoustic and somebody might get a little concerned or the flags might go up. It was a very enjoyable set and it, your songs were not, too long they weren't too short i, I felt like they were really they were good. just right yeah no i felt like they <laughs> were good. <laughs> sometimes you know when you're new in music or somebody maybe doesn't know your music they could get lost if it's you know too long or just it, it can tend to run together i guess in a sense and your mm-hmm. tracks had flow they you know you had a start and a stop you're very appreciative something i noticed you thanked us after every song you hope that we enjoyed it which we did <laughs> But you could tell your emotions fed through your music. So I would definitely encourage everybody to check you out at least once and, you know, give it, give it a listen, see if it's your thing. Thank you so much for the kind of words. I'm very, very glad you both enjoyed the, enjoy the show. Mm-hmm. That, no that, that's the best. And I'm glad it had a good flow. I'm glad. Okay. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> I, I was, I wanted more, <laughs> honestly. So that's a, that's always a good thing, right? It didn't. I wasn't bored. Nice. I wasn't like, oh my god, I want to get out of here. You know, I definitely. I left that there going. The I would go <laughs> yeah. and see Elliot Fulham again. So yeah, be, left bad, it, well, be I... bad if you left after one or two songs. Though. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> just joke. But I, I think it's. I That's think it's cool best. because uh, you you like Metallica. I see you have a Misfits frame post. Yeah, it's Weezer. Yeah. That's yeah. signed by Nick. That oh. too. Uh, Glenn yeah, Danzig. Yeah! Just, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> have you have you heard, a, the, awesome. have you heard the Danzig Elvis album? You gotta listen. To I that. heard a little bit of it. Okay. I need to, I need to listen to it in full. Yeah. But yeah. I, I actually only bought it on vinyl when it was like on pre order or whatever. And like, was it like a rare color yeah. color edition, limited edition oh, yeah. or something? Yeah. I think it was that record I was gonna get. But yeah, I've I've heard the I've heard that album. It'd be cool if you took like because your your music is pretty mellow. Uh, if you did some cover songs, mm-hmm. but 
of the more harder stuff, but toned them down. I think that would be because <laughs> I always, I always thought it was interesting when a band takes like if you took a Metallica song, I mean, you know, there's some bands out there that are like lounge band and uh, mm-hmm. they kind of bring bring it down. There's a bluegrass yeah. AC AC. What's it called? Uh, hey, hey, C D C or something. They're like bluegrass ACDC. So I, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you, maybe eventually I want to do like a bunch of covers and release it somehow or whatever. But I do. Or even on do, tour, do, you know, just throw, cool. throw in a couple of things like that. Yeah, like an Aussie song randomly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. Like a hard song, but just but tone it down, you know, and see it. Because I, yeah. I always like the songs where. Sometimes you're listening like I know that song because you know the lyrics maybe, and it's 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 something you didn't think it was you know it was something that was originally not heavy metal but you know metal or uh, hard rock or something. Yeah, yeah, that so could be fun. That could be cool. So this podcast to be out beginning of June, and I just want to mention the dates on your tour. Maybe you'll add some more for the summer, but June twenty second, you're in Atlanta, Georgia. 23rd, yep. you're in uh, Carborough, North Carolina. 25th, yes. you're in Philadelphia. Very excited for all these shows. <laughs> what is Philomoca? I've never heard of that. Is that the club? Philomoca? It's the venue. Okay. Yeah, it's a venue. I'm excited to go there. It's going to be fun. And the Mercury Lounge, I've heard. I think they've been around a while in New York. You can be there June 27th. I think yep. a lot of people have played. Have you heard of the Mercury Lounge? I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I played there. I did a one-time show there, and it was fantastic. It's a really great venue, and uh, I think like Radiohead might have played there in the earlier mm-hmm. days yeah. at one point. I it's been it, around for a long time. Yeah, I think a lot of legendary, but like, maybe or maybe played there before they became big. A lot of bands. And then June twenty eighth, you're in Somerville, Massachusetts, and July yeah. 5th, you're in Washington D.C. And you're supporting, it says, Sign Crushes Motorist. I, I've never heard of them, but I thought that that's a great name for a band. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're a great artist. Uh, they're very similar in terms of like the slow core uh, genre, that type of vibe, the, you know, soothing vocals and stuff. Okay. Okay. Before we get into the horror, anything else you want to tell us about? I wanted to mention, um, um, I don't know if you, I know you were in Washington, New Jersey, by the way. Oh, nice. I'm not going to say where you are, but um, <laughs> I don't want to give out your address. <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, um, do you know about Music Fest in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Because it's not too far from here. That's something you should check out to play there. For sure. They have they have the the larger stages with the big acts and stuff. And but I I actually enjoy seeing the the smaller like I saw a couple. Some years ago, Colin Hay from Men at Work playing a tiny stage. There's a lawn there. You bring your own seat. But they have, I don't know how many stages they have. And it's 10 days of music. And I don't know how you nice. get to, to play one of the stages, but it's like 10 days, like almost all day, night. And they have hundreds of bands. So I'm just saying it might be something to look into to get more exposure with your music. Yeah, you know, it, it's a big, Maybe. yeah, it's the steel stacks is kind of the performing stage, I believe it's called, but there's a ton of food, there's a ton of drinks, but there's all these there's smaller stages bands. too. Yeah. 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 It's been going on a long time. I used to live in uh, lower Nazareth near Bethlehem. So I would go there every year. I, I don't think I've been there in a couple of years, but they just released cause they do a bunch of free concerts as well. And there was probably like 75 bands or so that yeah are going to be doing shows just all throughout the week so yeah just look up music fest and it's with a uh not a c a k music with a k music fest <laughs> oh, uh, and it's in right. august every every year nice. uh, i'll look into it so now we want to talk about the horror <laughs> the horror of it all probably what or your acting yeah yeah probably what a lot of people initially know you from when they hear the name would be my guess I you, let's start with you've done other you've started out before terrifier too i, I saw you did a uh, voiceover i don't know it was an animated 
series or TV show? Do you want to tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that that was a, a a very fun. It was like a little. Uh, uh, it was a kids show for Apple Music. I played Sal the Rooster. Okay. <laughs> nice. And did you want to? Very ask? very a terrifier. Very, oh, yeah, not, yeah. definitely not the same fan base. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> did now? Did you want to? Did you want to be like when you were doing the interviews? You said you were like eight. So you must have wanted to do something maybe with acting, even music. Um, but did you want? Did you also want to act? Did you have that acting bug? You, you want to do something in entertainment? In that yeah, I've like I was like saying earlier, I'm I love art on mm-hmm. all levels, whether it is music, whether it's even if it's just talking about music or doing oh, yeah. interviews. But yeah, acting is is one of my favorite type of art. Okay, one of the my one of, one of my favorite arts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I always wanted to be an actor. Uh, so yeah. How did you get the role of Jonathan in Terrifier Two? Did you have to audition? Uh, how did that Yes, I did. I did four auditions for Terrifier 2. Uh, and all of them I was very nervous for. <laughs> and I'm very glad it worked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started, I did two self tapes and two in person auditions. And the very last audition was at the producer's house. That was okay. another one of those James Hetfield moments where I was <laughs> yeah. with nervousness. <laughs> uh, and we went over the lines. It was like more of like a table read style. Some like I had stuff memorized, but they also threw in like, oh, well, uh, can you read this scene? And they put mm-hmm. me on the spot. And uh, and Lauren, who plays Sienna in Terrifier mm-hmm. 2, was already acting as if she was my big sister. So she was like, OK, yeah, let's go. Do you mind if Elliot and I go over the lines first? We'll go over the lines mm-hmm. and then we'll bring them back over to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she, she's the best. It was uh so she made very, you feel very, comfortable I'm, from the yes, beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah, right from the get-go, she was my big sis. Well, it's funny because you guys have such good chemistry, so it, I guess that makes sense hearing you say it now. I, I Obviously, I yeah. understand you know, how film works. You're, you're going to have some kind of rapport, but it seemed like you guys were perfectly fit for each other every step of the way. Yeah, I agree. Incredible casting on that. And also, we look very similar, too. Like, the, mm-hmm. the cheekbones yeah. and stuff. And the eyes. Mm-hmm. I feel like we definitely look like we could be siblings. Maybe we're, like, long-lost cousins or something. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. What, what did your parents think about you auditioning for a horror movie? I don't know how old you were when we were auditioned. I mean, they were excited. <laughs> we're, we're well, yeah, well, yeah you said fans, your parents so we were... would go to horror conventions. and, and... Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so it was actually my dad that got that found that audition. Uh, we were I forget exactly what we were doing that day, but uh, my dad looked at a website called Actors Access, and and he saw Terrifier too. And like, what? Like, we're huge. We were already huge fans of the very first Terrifier. Like, yeah, no yeah. way. <laughs> so uh, we submitted a picture of me, and then uh, I ended up. You know, they ended up like, yeah, you you kind of fit Jonathan. So I did mm-hmm. the did the audition for it. That's awesome. I was a fan of the first one, too, when it first came out. Nice. I I actually just talked about this with someone recently. It got kind of overshadowed because I think that the It remake came out right around the same time that first Terrifier movie was released. So I think nobody kind of realized there was another clown movie out there that you could see at that time. So the first one probably could have gained more steam initially, if not for It, but... Obviously, the second yeah. one yeah. totally took off, which is great for well, you guys. Well, Terrifier was still an independent, and it, Stephen King, mm-hmm. I mean, it yeah. can't get any higher than Stephen King, but right. yeah, I saw Terrifier. I've been, I, I've been wanting to watch that movie for a long time. I, my wife and I, my wife likes horror movies, but I don't think she likes the, the bloody ones or <laughs> clown movies. But I remember that was on my radar for a, the longest time, and I finally watched it, and I loved it, and even loved the second nice. one, one better. Wow. Now, what's funny is the third one, he's not a friend of our, but he's an, we'll say acquaintance, Daniel Roebuck, mm-hmm. who okay. is doing, he just finished doing a Christmas movie in Bethlehem. Jeremy and I and my friend and Matt and his wife uh, got to be extras in some of the scene, the ending scenes, but it's a nice, wholesome family movie. But at the same time, 
<laughs> so he's playing Santa Claus in the movie, but he's also Santa Claus. We won't. I know you can't give away any like anything, but we know because he posted he's Santa Claus in Terrifier Three, Daniel Roebuck. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he wore the same. I doubt he wore the same suit in the family movie, but it's just strange that he. <laughs> He was the same character for two different movies yeah, two, in a short totally different. Of time. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, that, that's really cool. Have you met? Do you know Daniel Roebuck? Is that I haven't? I unfortunately I didn't meet him. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know what I'm allowed. To, um, yeah. What I'm 100 percent allowed to say or anything yeah. right. about certain scenes where, but uh, he, well, we know it's a Christmas cool. movie. <laughs> we know it's a Christmas movie, and we know yeah, that it is. I'm and, excited. About and you don't have to say anything, but this is my, don't say anything. Don't, don't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that Art kills Daniel's character and takes his suit. That's what I think. But I don't know. That's his, that's his theory. That's how he gets the Santa suit, but we, that's my theory. I guess you'll have to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one thing I'm curious real quick before we move on, going back to the um, Stephen King's It and terrifier supposedly the kids in the it movie they met bill skarsgård while he was in the pennywise makeup when you met yeah. art yeah. the clown who's played by david howard thornton did you meet him in makeup or without makeup on for the first time oh man no i it was actually kind of funny the way i met him we it was in the parking lot of the set so like we were oh. in the parking lot and i saw him and he was standing out there and he's kind of just like you know you know, getting himself situated. And I was like, wait, that's Art the Clown. That's that's David. That's David Arthur right there. <laughs> and so we got out and met him then. He wasn't in the makeup, but uh we've had plenty of great experiences on set together when he's in the makeup too. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah. all around fun, good vibes on set. Well, I can say I've met a lot of the actors from the first two movies. We're we go to a lot of conventions just like you did growing up. And something that always yeah. stood out to me from the very first Terrifier movie, everybody from that cast, Terrifier 1 and 2, is so fan-friendly, so yeah. appreciative. They, If you don't want to meet your fans, you do a heck of a great job pretending, <laughs> which obviously that's not the case. You guys all <laughs> love the fans. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to get at. I've, I've been blown away at every single cast mm -hmm. member from those movies. The support that they give back to the fans who support them. So as mm -hmm. a fan, thank you for that. Yeah. Of course, and thank you for supporting the movie. I mean, the reason why Terrifier 2 blew up, and you're, you're talking about, you know, the difference between Terrifier and Terrifier 2 is all the fans that were talking about it. It was all word of mouth. And yeah. then when you would see all the stuff on Twitter, like, oh, a fan or whatever passed out because it was so mm -hmm. crazy oh, and gory yeah. or whatever. I remember seeing like, that. Like, the word of mouth of people and fans is what made Terrifier 2, you know, this big phenomenon. So if there's nothing but love for fans. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a fan of horror, so, uh, and I'm a fan of the movie, too. So if you want to yeah. talk about Terrifier <laughs> 2, I'm excited to talk about mm -hmm. it, you know? I'll right. talk about it all day. I mean, I'm, as a fan myself, thank you. That That's great, though, being a fan of horror, and now you're in one of the... One of the biggest. I'd, I'd say. call it the elite franchise of yeah. art, of like the current 2020s, 2010s. Well, there, well, there cool. hasn't been any new horror characters since maybe Saw. Like, it, uh, yeah, it's the equivalent. The Jigsaw. To me, Art the Clown is becoming the equivalent of like Michael Myers in the 70s or Jason in the 80s. That This is our, mm. <laughs> our big, you know, iconic horror character. At least mm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to agree. He's definitely turned into, you know, one of those iconic slashers. I'm mean, All the cosplay that I see, especially at these horror mm -hmm. cons, but also oh, yeah. around Halloween time, it's, it's definitely taken a whole life of its own. Yeah, it's, it's, it is pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine in your shoes being a part of it. That's got to be so exciting. Yeah, I'm just a horror, I'm just a horror nerd nerding out about the movie <laughs> the yeah. same franchise it. can you tell us any stories though from terrifier 2 you said you some kind of hinted yeah we we have some i have plenty 
uh, David Howard Thornton on set is hilarious. And one of my favorite things is how well he can snap into the character and snap out. Oh, wow. So, like, you know, like a lot of people are like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be Art the Clown even in between takes. I'm going to be in the zone. It'll be cut. So how are you doing, Elliot? You know, whatever. So it's uh -huh. just like he's like, David, <laughs> he's in the mix. Yeah. And it's hilarious. We would do, uh, we had a fart competition <laughs> <laughs> okay. throughout nice. this entire nice. fart set. He was like, it was an all around great time. Many, many fun, great times mm -hmm. on that set. Was there anything filmed, uh, you know, like outtakes that we, I, I don't know if there's any extended versions of Terrifier 2 that are out, but I was just curious. I don't know myself. Like those, the Foley's or the, the like with the bonus, bonus the material, <laughs> director's uh, cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or behind the scenes. Well, Sometimes I I know there's at least the girl who played bloopers. Natalie. She get she got butchered like a million times or something. <laughs> she kept screaming so much. They said she had no voice left. But I don't know. Were there, oh. were there any with you? <laughs> there wasn't much. Many bloopers or whatever that got cut on me. There was just like to my memory, there was just like one scene where it was right before that dinner table, like hanging out, like the family at the dinner table, mm -hmm. uh, talking about Halloween or whatever. There was just one thing of me playing video games and seeing a country and saying, Jonathan, food's ready. And like after this game, <laughs> uh, there was mm -hmm. a funny blooper. Like these records that I have were in the movie in Jonathan's oh. bedroom. Oh, wow. So like, yes. you know, there's <laughs> some, that's a signed Slay record, a signed, signed Metallica nice. James Hetfield record from one interview. You both of them. Wow. Uh, and one of the times when she walked in, one of the records fell fell off the yes. thing. I was like, "Oh no, yeah. please!" No. <laughs> and then watching actually, while it was done. that was something I wanted to ask. Did you get to have the input on kind of the background in your room in the movie, or was that Damien's call? It was. I think it was like a mixture of both. My dad helped because I interviewed, like you said, like I was talking about. I interviewed so many metal bands and stuff, so I had all these. You know, like I knew the publicist of Metal Blade. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like so, like we were able to ask for clearance you know could i could elliot have this oh, okay. you know record in the background mm -hmm. yeah or like this painting in the background whatever uh that's kind of how it all came mm -hmm. came together yeah because awesome. you never know with copyright whether you can have just yeah an album hanging on the wall i know with music you need to clear it definitely clear it but that was good that you cleared everything with yeah. them yeah and, and also a special shout out to olga who was the set designer she was the one that laid it all out and stuff and like maybe mm -hmm. there wasn't something that wasn't you know like a, a metal band or whatever but uh she she laid out and she did a kick-ass job i have to say making jonathan's bedroom but it makes you look like a teen right like that's the for <laughs> an indie movie sometimes small budget you got to cut somewhere your room didn't look like a budget cut. If it was, fantastic job, because you looked like a teenager who loved yeah. music, and that's what you were supposed to be. It was perfect. And thankfully, I, I felt like I was a teenager in my own room, too, because like all the stuff around me was so familiar. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of what Jonathan is, is me. You know, being, yeah. uh, I, I'm not like obsessed with serial killers or anything, yeah. but... <laughs> uh, I am obsessed with horror. I'm obsessed uh, with music, and that's kind of what Jonathan was. So it was pretty easy to play that character. Being in a room where a lot of the stuff surrounding you is, you know, my own stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Now in three, like we said, we can't tell us much, but um, is there more with Jonathan and music than I don't remember in two? As besides what was, you know, in his room. Like, do you get to do you get Ooh. to sing? Do you get to use any of your music? Your music, not none of my music. Okay, not of my okay. music. I'll, Jonathan doesn't sing. Does Jonathan join a band? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. But no, 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 no band. For Jonathan. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm excited to see what y'all think. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna love it. I'm sure I yeah. will. Would you like to do more horror acting? Uh, you know, in other horror movies, or or would, are you pursuing more acting roles? Or even maybe dramatic roles, comedy. Yeah. Do you have any new projects yeah, without uh, it. that you're working on now or coming up that you can tell us? Yes, there's one that I am all done filming for. It's called The Pitchfork Retreat. It's another horror movie. 
Oh, okay. uh, I'm not completely sure when it's going to be coming out, but it's like an anthology st- type of style of horror. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, Terrifier 3. I'm always doing auditions. Mm-hmm. I'm always trying to get, you know, a new role or whatever. But uh, anything that, any new project that I'm doing, I will definitely make sure I tell and announce it. But right okay. now, currently, I'm just doing auditions. And I'm all about if it's a horror movie or mm-hmm. something else. Like if it's comedy or drama or whatever, I'm cool too. Now, what is yeah. what is your favorite? I know you might not be able to name your absolute favorite horror movie, or maybe you can. Or franchise. I what can. is yours? My number one favorite horror movie of all time is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one. Okay. Uh, I feel like that's as gritty and as classic as it can get. The way it's filmed, it actually feels like you're in the movie and also one thing that makes me like it even more is that's one of the first things that josie my girlfriend and i kind of talked about and she, mm-hmm. i found out that she, it was her favorite so it just made me like nice. it even more than i already do so yeah. yeah that's that's definitely my number one and the first scream is is up there too my mine is not to talk about me but mine is uh <laughs> the friday 13th franchise and I've never yes, been. Yes, that's an all time. Now I, we both are close to Blairstown, New Jersey, and I've never been there. Have you been there, where they filmed the first? I, right. I've driven around there, like dr- okay. driving through every single mm-hmm. time. My dad's like, they filmed it, <laughs> and we would nerd out. But yeah. I feel like like Camp Crystal Lake, like like weeks or whatever, or like a weekend where you could spend like oh, yeah. sleeping in it's the very weather. expensive though. or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I haven't done it, but I, that is something that, you know, I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool to do. Yeah. <laughs> My wife used to work around there, and but she would come home when it was dark out, and she was just freaked out, like, even though, you know, Jason's not going to come out, but <laughs> driving by where they filmed at night, you just kind of, weird thoughts get through your head. Yeah. <laughs> driving at night, you look in the the mirror and Jason behind you sitting in the back seat. There's a road near um I think it's it's in Phillipsburg, it's it's a back road I take through almost near Stewartsville. But there's a road with a cemetery. And when I come home from if I go to Wind Creek in Bethlehem, I don't know, I take that shortcut. I turn by Lowe's and down anyway. But I always come home, you know, late at night and down that road, there's no light. I don't think there's any lights on the road. There's a cemetery there. There's like railroad tracks. It's, it's, I mean, you could film a horror movie there. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There's no houses. It's just a kind of a field and there's a cemetery on the left. I I don't know. Baseball field behind you. Yeah. (laughs) And that's when you watch too many horror movies. You start (laughs) thinking, you know. Yeah. You know, you start imagining like all this scenarios that yeah, could possibly yeah. go wrong but it won't happen yeah, but yeah. you think about it, it freaks yeah. you out you know <laughs> yeah so i have one more random question real quick okay and this is more convention <laughs> nice. related what is the weirdest thing you've ever signed an autograph on at a show oh that's a great question there was someone had me it was a, a weird interaction someone had me sign a dvd of a movie that i wasn't in and I was like, Are you sure if you want me to sign it? I don't know what this is or whatever. And they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, sign it, sign it. I'm like, I wasn't in this movie or whatever. And like, uh, yeah, yeah, you can sign it. I don't care. And I'm like, That's okay. Weird. So I that signed it. And then, then so how how was it filming in that movie? I'm like, I wasn't in the movie. <laughs> I don't know what this is. And they're like, wait, what? And I was like, oh, no, this is the worst. And then yeah. they uh, – uh, then I never saw them ever again. <laughs> that was probably the the weirdest sign, just because like just so random. But mm-hmm. other than that, Terrifier, they they have some like good thing with Terrifiers, they have some fantastic merch. You know, like mm-hmm. cereal boxes and oh yeah, like the way it's a very visually wonderful thing. So there's tons of awesome things I get to sign, like mm-hmm. art the clown masks and stuff. Like it's the yeah. it's the coolest. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted the cereal boxes. The little they have two different sizes. The, yeah, but they're yes. they're yeah. RDOs yeah, or something yeah. like that, they're called. But Jeremy and I went to 
yeah. New York. New York mm-hmm. to the where they filmed the it was the costume store. The yeah, Halloween the, oh, store. Awesome. The costume shop. I forget what the name and of met now. art in costume and little pale girl. Um, got a, really. Yeah. And got a photo <laughs> in the store. So yes. that was that was the coolest thing yeah. really cool. for us. So our listeners can find you on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, check out Elliot's Instagram. Uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. I like your, I don't know if you, you haven't yeah. done it in a while, but your little, your dance, your neck, I don't even know how you move your neck. Like oh, that. yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my, my freak neck. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, the quagmire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Hopefully, you know, when you get older, you don't have, you know, neck problems doing that. But. I'll either have neck problems or like, an extremely strong neck. I don't know what I'll get. Yeah. (laughs) Your website's littlepunkpeople.net. They can find your concert page, your biography news, uh, and even artwork. Uh, I was going to ask, but I I assume that's your uh, Josie's artwork? Or is that your artwork? It's a There's Some of them them are, are, are Josie's artwork, but also there's a lot of them that are my mom's, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah. check out littlepunkpeople.net. Is there anything else you want to say or that we didn't cover? <laughs> uh, no, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, yes. thank you thank both. You for... Both of you are so cool. Had a fun time talking about music and horror. Good times. I'm sure we'll meet you at some point again. And uh... I've met you a couple of times now, but I, anytime you're around, I'll see you. So. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you for your time. (laughs) Yes. Thank you, Elliot. Have a nice day. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Well, you thought you could just spread your hate like a bear. A sight and the old and wise will pick their side in. been listening to no good music today's interview was produced and edited by rob j lilly and recorded via zoom at the did you say seven studios in washington new jersey you can find no good music on apple Podcasts, podbean spotify pandora and almost anywhere you listen to podcasts exit music by the band 99 percent the songs end the ways over the moon Dolanaya, unnamed, and mistake. Use with permission from Elliot Fulham. <laughs>